On Wednesdays, we wear singlets and we talk wrestling. Welcome to another episode of another motherfucking podcast. And no, this is not a wrestling podcast, but like I said, today we are talking wrestling. So, I'm your host, Paris Ahmad, and you are now entering the Paris verse. Before we get into the episode, of course, if you want to support the show financially, there are multiple ways you could do so. First and foremost, you can find us over on Patreon at patreon.com slash saved by Paris, where you can subscribe to us for only, say it with me, $3.33. Cheaper than your cup of coffee. You can also subscribe to us directly on Spotify, where you will gain the same bonus episodes that you will find over on Patreon. You just won't get the extra perks like my music, of course. Um, To support the show does not have to be financially. So if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please be sure to rate the show five stars as it will help us move up in the algorithm. Now that we got all that out the way, this is a wrestling episode themed podcast. Uh, something that I want to do go something I want to do going forward. I can't fucking talk where um, where I devote an episode to wrestling, but I don't want to start a wrestling podcast. So that's my dilemma. So uh, just merge it, merge it with my another month from podcast, of course. So um, since this is the first wrestling podcast, I do want to pay my respects and and um. Uh, and whatnot to oh uh, a person who in the modern era era <laughs> like I said I can't talk but to a person in the modern era who quickly quickly became my favorite wrestler and um I got his plaques back here if you can't see it but uh that's of course Bray Wyatt um Bray Wyatt as you all know by now um unexpectedly passed away. Uh, August 24th, um, it's, it's been about a month now, and, um, yeah, man, that was just, that was one of those things that was just so out of nowhere, it was, it was not expected, we knew he was, we knew he was out of commission, uh, we knew it was for health reasons, um, but he had just been, um, sorry, he had just been, rumored or confirmed to ret- be returning soon for a program and it was actually confirmed that they were planting the seeds soon for him to return to TV and so this was this was out of nowhere this was unexpected and so um of course you know Bray Wyatt real life creator of the character Wyndham Rotunda um while I didn't know Wyndham himself I will only refer to him as Bray during this episode, but I did love seeing a side of him that we didn't see in TV, we didn't see with his social media because he was just so private. He was a, such a private person. He was, and he was always in his head, of course. So uh, I did love seeing, you know, how he was backstage and how how beloved he was by his peers, and you know how much he just loved his family. You know, those are all just great qualities that even further prove that he was just such a great person that um did, he didn't deserve the hate that he got in this in this lifetime he you know y- y'all were i don't want to say y'all you know but people were on twitter you know constantly bashing him back and forth but you know his fiend character and he talked too much and this and that and so um we got to start giving people their flowers while they're here. We got to start giving them respect that they deserve. So um, just keep that in mind going forward. But, yeah, I do want to share something that a lot of people don't know, um, just how crucial the, the character Bray Wyatt is to me as a person. But, uh, you know, when I first started donning the ski mask, you know, it was just something that I wanted to do to differentiate myself from other artists. Um and I was originally going to, I was going to take on this persona with the ski mask fully, completely. I was going to purge anything that had my face on it, uh, any any pictures on social media, any videos, anything that had my face on it. And I was just gonna straight ski mask. 
And uh, around that time that I that I kind of started messing with the ski mask, Bray Wyatt introduced the Fiend character. And I was able to, not only did I enjoy it and I loved it because I love Bray Wyatt and I loved everything that he did in his career. I even loved him when he was um, Husky Harris. And a lot of people won't admit that, but during the new Nexus stage, Husky Harris was one of my favorite um, wrestlers. And I don't know why. I really don't know why. I don't know if it was the look. He was a big man. I don't know if it was just something about him that attracted me to his aura and his his presence. But I liked him when he was Husky Harris, man. And I remember when when the new Nexus had disappeared off of TV. And, you know, we had we had some of them that had stuck around. But Husky Harris, I, I, was, I remember Googling in 2015, what happened to Husky Harris? Where is Husky Harris? And learning that he was in NXT, uh, and, and maybe this was 2015, 2014, it was before his main roster call-up. Um, but learning that he was in NXT with this Bray Wyatt character, it just it just made me happy, and and that's why he has been one of my favorite wrestlers. Uh, just just everything that he's presented to the wrestling world and to us, and everything that he gave us, it was just truly unique, truly one of a kind. But back to the story that I wanted to share, uh, what a lot of people didn't know is he had introduced this fiend character around the time that I was doing the ski mask thing. And so seeing him play Bray Wyatt in the Funhouse versus the Fiend with the mask, I kind of drew inspiration from that myself. And so when I'm me, I'm just Paris and Maude, you know. But when I'm with the mask, I'm saved by Paris. And so I only, if you notice, I wear the mask when I only music related. If it's me performing, if it's a music video. If it's uh, images relating to Saved by Paris. And so I, I drew that inspiration from Bray, and I do want to go, I do want to dive further into that, but I, I just, I had to give the man his respect and thank, thank him for everything that he's contributed to wrestling. So, um, another thing I wanted to talk about, because I don't got much time, but, uh, I want to talk about the bloodline story, where it's going. Um, it's been one of the longest stories in WWE. Y'all always used to complain about longevity and programs and whatnot. And now we got one of the longest stories going on right now in WWE. And um, I love it. I just love it. I absolutely love the bloodline story I've, lo I've loved every part of it right now we are kind of in a slump with it but um it's been the one thing other than bray himself but then when he got released you know this is what kept me watching wwe i canceled my uh my hulu live so i was no longer watching raw and smackdown weekly um i i just i didn't have enough time to commit to that but also when Bray Wyatt did get released, that kind of, that it, you could ask anyone who knows me, who talks wrestling with me, that really took a, took a lot out of me with the, with, with the company. I was, I was ready to be completely done. But like I said, this bloodline story has been great. So I would find videos on the official WWE channels and keep up to date with BR, um, you know, uh, BR articles about, the shows and whatnot, and I kept my Peacock subscription so I would watch pay-per-views, but this Bloodline thing has been fucking phenomenal from main event Jey Uso to him falling in line to Sami Zayn to Jay not embracing Sami, but everyone else did, and then Jay finally embraces Sami, and then Sami finally getting fed up with Roman's reign of terror shall i say um i enjoyed um the wrestlemania bouts the tag team titles between sammy and owens and jay and jimmy um say what you will i did think cody was gonna beat roman but now in hindsight it's kind of kind of good that he didn't i i always wanted jay to be the one to do it and so when cody got brought to the company uh, which was one of the biggest and, and 
crazy as acquisitions. But when he got brought to the company, of course, it only made sense. He's there for the WWE Championship. Does not matter who's holding it. Just so happens that the person who has a clutch around it is Roman Reigns. So, um, of course, he goes after Roman. But I always felt like that was Jay's. That was Jay's. You know, that would be the full circle, the full cum- culmination would be Jay beating Roman. Now, the people throw in The Rock, maybe, um, or maybe Cody again. And, you know, I don't know. At this point, I don't know. And like I said, it is in a slump. I'm not ready for it to be over, but at the same time, it needs to pick up a little bit. So we'll see where it's going. I think where it's going now, I think Jimmy is the is is acting as a tribal chief you know, at the moment with Roman being gone. And so we should see how that plays out when he gets, once he gets back. Cause, cause what is Jimmy doing? You know, it kind of like it went forward and now it's going back, but it makes sense in a way that the reason he turned on Jay was because he didn't want Jay to become the tribal chief, but there's been clues and pieces throughout this whole story that Jimmy's really jealous this whole time of his brother. So We'll see. We'll see where it's going. Um, I know a lot of people on Twitter. Uh, they bash the story now. They you can't make people happy, and uh, people are fickle. Is that what Daniel Bryan said? They're fickle. You can't please them. One minute they want something, you give it to them, and then they're upset. So, we'll see how it plays out. But I'm loving the presentation of Jay and Jimmy now. Um, looking forward to that that eventual clash of the two brothers that I thought would never happen in a million years. That, that's one thing I could say about this Bloodline story is that it has elevated Jay and Jimmy to heights that I don't think they would have ever reached without this Bloodline story. So we'll see where it goes. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that pans out. Um, we'll see where Solo's story go. You know, maybe, maybe Solo would be the one that takes the belt off of Roman and maybe with the help of Paul Heyman. Who knows? So... Um, yeah, we'll see where we'll see where it goes, man. I I, I love this bloodline story. Um, I, there was some more that I wanted to talk about, but I'm pressed for time right now, so we'll end it here. But let me know: is this something that you guys? Because uh, my main audience, you're probably not wrestling fans, but if you are wrestling fans and you come across this, please, man, let me know. Like. Should I keep this going? What are some things I should talk about? Um, I don't watch AEW. Uh, I, I've i always had trouble with just WWE. So to add in another wrestling company. You know, when I was a kid, I was able to watch it all. But now I just don't have the time for it. So I, I don't even watch WWE Weekly. So I'm not going <laughs> to not gonna keep in tune with another wrestling company. But that being said, uh, this is something that I should keep doing going forward. Would you love to see more Wrestling Wednesdays? Or is this something that I should just eh, cut it off now? Let a nigga know. With that being said, this has been another motherfucking episode of another motherfucking podcast here on Wrestling Wednesdays. Peace.